right? So it's it's a very very beautiful horn, and it's an unbelievable extension of um, the regular French horn. Um, and a lot of the times, so the the way to think about um, Descan horns or um, per perhaps like Wagner um, horns is, um, you know, these players would normally bring um, these these instruments in with them into like a film score recording session. Um, and let's say, you know, a lot of us film composer guys, when we're especially when we're composing in the doll, we love to write really high French horn lines. So we'll take this batch and we'll be like. And we'll play a lot of those types of lines, uh, but you know it's it's a bit harder to do that in in you know in real life. So a lot of the times the player will have a desk can horn, and either the conductor um, will pretty much um, tell them it's the best option to use a desk can horn, or they'll automatically know from their their experience and their wisdom that they're going to pull out a a desk can horn. And just to show you guys the range, so here is um, C4. So this is mid C. One octave up, C5. C6 and that's the highest note it goes to so Um, and with this with this type of horn in specific, um, a lot of the times you'll have a hard time um, coming to the um, realization of whether it's a trumpet or if it's a descant horn simply because of how high it goes up. So people who are listening to music might be like, what the hell is that? Uh, but <laughs> it's actually a French horn. Um, and I think that um, the best thing about this thing is that even though it has the tone of the French horn, um, it still has um, it still has the the range of like a trumpet. So you can get all the way up here while maintaining that tone that we also love from the French horn. So um, unlike any other, um, well, like any other time, um, I've written a demo cue using the descant horn, uh, and these demo cues just pretty much highlight the descant horn and all of the. Uh, they don't highlight, they highlight the instrument that I'm reviewing. Um, uh, and so then after that, we can go ahead and dive in and see how I use the Descan horn um, and uh, what's the best way that um, you guys could use the Descan horn if you guys um, owned it. Um, it's an unbelievable library. Michael Patty does it every single time. Cindy Samples is an unbelievable company. Um, and uh, here we go. I present to you um, this track is called Take Off.
that little thing at the end wasn't part of it. <laughs> but anyways, so there's the track I wrote using the Descan horn. Um, that was called Take Off. Um, and on that piece, I wanted to highlight the range of the Descan horn, and I especially wanted to highlight how it's used um, in a piece with many other libraries, um, even other brass libraries, um, and especially involving it in the context of a big orchestra with a huge choir um, and uh, everything like that. Um, and I think that's that's um, the, one of the biggest things when reviewing a library I think that people have to keep in mind is that, you know, we want to review libraries um, in a way um, that we would normally use the library. So we would normally incorporate this French horn with tons of other, you know, libraries. So I wanted to create a piece that sort of highlights all of that. Um, and I, I appreciate the kind comments that you guys have. I really do appreciate that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through the piece, not only from, um, you know, perspective of the descant horn um, and how it's used in the context of it, but also the composition of the piece. Um, so um, let's go ahead and take a look at the UI for the French horn, first of all. So here's the UI of the uh, Descant horn, and as you can see, it's almost identical to the um, UI of um, all the other Sony Brass instruments. It's pretty much it, it is identical. Um, and so just for an, just for a little demo here, let me go and pull up a a French horn, like sort of a a solo French horn. We can sort of compare the two. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So, I'll go ahead and maybe automate this. So there is the regular French horn, and here is the descant horn. Right, and so then if you wanted to do some type of like cool alial auric lines, I feel like this is an unbelievable library simply because of its dynamic range. Right, and, it, and so like I said, it goes all the way from it looks like um, Looks like A3 all the way up to C6. So bam, all the way up to... So it's a gigantic range. So that is that. So let me go and pull up the articulations on this thing. So we're mainly... Um, let's just go ahead and pull up like the staccato. So it has, yeah. And we'll play a line. What from, uh, from this guy? Where is that? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and play a line from here. All right. So it's like. Uh, <laughs> so it has a very nice very nice range um, and then, so let's just go ahead and, since we've sort of talked through it, let's just improvise with it. So um, for, for you guys who weren't here beforehand, I'll just go ahead and do this thing in, um, we'll do it in like D minor.
And then like our 12 horns. So that's just a little example there. So let's go through and uh, check out what the hell is going on in this piece. So, bam. We're going to start out with some sound design stuff. Some pads. And by the way, just a little composition tip. Um, the French horn, as you guys can tell, is a very soaring instrument. So depending on how you ride it, it can be a very sort of soaring, strong, intense, but it can also be sort of very um, very intriguing and mysterious and beautiful and sophisticated. Um, and I think that the way for which you write, um, the way for which you write French horn lines um, really um, uh, is very important on the way that your your listener is going to be able to dry, digest the piece. So if you just write like, um, like, you want to write sort of spread out and sort of like, and that's why on this piece I was doing like. Like sort of spread out um, to where some people are just going to be like. Well, I mean, which is fine, but on this piece I, w I wanted to really highlight. And what you can also do, which is a really, really good tip, is that if you're going to end up writing multiple French horn lines, you're going to want to probably do two voices. So like right here, this is two voices. So let's say I wanted to do, um, hell, let's just say we wanted to do the Narnia theme, right? So I've done that before. So this will be like. Right, we just have that one French horn line. Then we can go in, and we can go ahead and like. Uh, so you're gonna record your voices separately. So I'm um, like on that line. So then we then we would go. Right, so we hit the sus chord on a separate French horn, and it's so much better because if you would just record like a sustain line, like a lot of people do, um, because people are naturally lazy. I'm not calling everyone lazy, but um, even some of the best composers that I know, a lot of the times they'll just end up like uh, they'll end up just pulling up a, a horn patch and they'll be like, Burn! right? Uh, but it's so much better when you write um, other vo uh, separate voices because you get the you get the legato in there. So just to, another example again. Can see it's so much better um but anyways let's keep on going with analyzing this piece right so um here we go And then notice this high note comes in on one of the pads, which makes it even more soaring and beautiful. It's just like a sort of hit point. And here come our strings.
Yeah, so it's really damn nice. Um, and so uh, someone asked about the articulation. So this library only comes with Legato. It'll have sustain on the Legato patch if you just turn Legato off. And then it also comes with Staccato. It doesn't come with any rips or anything like that. It's just um, Legato and Staccato, which is, I mean, it's all I'd really use on the desk and horn. If I needed like a, a really intense like tremolo thing, I'd probably go on some French horn patch um, like on, um, well, let's see. Uh, probably do Cine Brass um, or um, Symphony Series has some really good articulations. Um, but yeah, that's probably what I'd end up doing. So when the strings come in, right, we have, we've pretty much had this whole pedal point. We, we've had this pedal point on C sharp. And then when it, when the strings come in, it's like, And then what it ends up doing later is so that so when the strings come in, since it's been completely static and it's been like on a pedal point the whole time, it's so much better when the strings come in with that beautiful. And those are some cool chords. Um, okay. So. Strings come in. We have this low rumble type thing. Then we have this oceanic pad. Okay, and here what it actually does is it does something called contrary motion. So one of the... What the hell? So one of the lines is going... And one of the other lines is going. So these two string patches are just playing an octave. So one of them is playing, I think, in like in this range. Then one of them's in this range, and it creates that full um, Lord of the Rings type, uh, you know, uh, Whoa. And then if you copy that and then you bring it into here. And then you get like a you do like a Again, it's just so sweet. It's that like orchestration technique. It's 
swag. All right. Can't believe I just said that. Shit. Okay. So, and when the desk and horn... Oh, am I recording? Damn. So when the desk and horn comes in on the second round, it actually has a harmony. Um, so it has a second line um, that's sort of following it along the way. Um, and it's, it, it creates a little bit of dissonance, but not too much. <laughs> 